Hello guys and welcome back. So let's do a continuation of our program. So, so far what we have is we can right click, we can select uh, particular items on the table and we can switch which mode we are in. So what I want us to do is change the text here to match the mode that we are in over there. So that at least we have my drive, we have favorites, recent, blah, 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 and so on. Okay. So um, here we can have a mod title, for example. So we need to just put some text there that we can change every time we are on a different mode. Now the mod them the mod titles themselves would not be nice to put here. So but let's try that instead. So what I'm going to do is give this item a class or an ID so I can grab it whenever I want. So let's go to uh, our index.html. Where is this? Um, oh, and by the way, the only thing I've changed in our project is I've added a file which I called loader.gif. This is a GIF file. Uh, let me open the folder so you can see it. So this is just an image I got from the internet which shows a loader. So it's something like this. So that at least you see something while things are loading. So it's a GIF file. You can download these for free on Google. Just grab one or you can check the source code. Uh, this very source code, I'll have it in there. Okay, so what I want to do is look for that title where it says my drive. Uh, not here. This is the main title. It's this one right here. Oh, no, no, that's not the one. It's my files. That's what it says. So it's written my files. That's what I'm looking for. And I found it right here. So let me remove its break tag. We don't need that. So this one should start with my drive has the title. There's already a class here, but let's just add one called JS um, uh, mod title. Better to be descriptive like that. So that way we can grab it with a class name. So every time we do a mod change, I want the mod to be in here instead of that alert that we are showing. Let's remove that alert, which is right here, set mode. So instead of this, what we want to do is we want to use document.getElement. So we're going to use document.querySelector instead since we are grabbing a, um, a class. So I'm going to put a dot and then JS mod title like that. So we've grabbed that item and then we're going to say dot inner HTML. This means the contents of that object, uh, of that element we've grabbed. So that's the inner HTML. So we're replacing the inner HTML with mod dot current, which is the text. So let's see how that plays out. If I refresh my page, you see it starts with my drive. If I click here, it goes to favorites recent trash and so on. Okay, so that's great. Seems like uh, this is capitalized. So now the thing is, instead of showing this, because sometimes this may not make very much sense, I want a user, uh, a more user readable version of this. Now what we could do is we could just change. Actually, we could just change how this my drive works by changing the mode to this instead. We can put spaces there. So what I'm going to do is grab every instance of this and thus just change and put a space there. Oh, IDs should not have spaces, right? Let me see if this ruins anything anyway. Let me try it out. So apparently it doesn't. So those things work. I don't, I don't know how whether it's a good idea to uh, wait a second, whether it's a good idea to use spaces in IDs. I don't know about that, but let's see if it's actually grabbing the right item here, uh, new selected. I want to do a console.log of this item. In fact, I can just do an alert 
and say new selected dot tag name. I just want to see if it actually grabs anything using that ID with a space. I actually don't know if it does. Oh, so it seems it actually does work. Okay, so that's great if it works. So let's leave it like that. So now to start with, uh, my drive will change that to, let me find mod title, which is right there. So let me capitalize this so that it suits the other stuff. So I'm gonna go edit convert to uppercase like that, okay. That way it starts with that. So refresh, favorites, recent, trash. Now, um, let's see, let's go back again to where this job mod title is, which is right there. Now, dot current is a text. We can actually add some other uh, function to modify some strings. For example, I can say to lowercase like that. This is a function, so I'll do open close bracket. This will convert the text to lowercase. So if I do this now, you can see it converted that to lowercase. Now, I don't know if there's also title case, but let's try it. If that's a valid function at all, I'm not sure yet. No, nope, doesn't seem like it is. So there's only uppercase and lowercase. So let's just get rid of that for now. Okay. Now, if for some reason you don't want to show this, you want to show some different text here, you can create an object where you pass in the mod name and then it give, gives you the other text that you want to put. But I don't want to make it that elaborate, so let's leave it at that. Okay, so at least now we are changing modes, which is nice. Now, every time we change mode, we have to reload our table and reset everything because there'll be different files in here and we need to reload the content of this page right here, okay? So in order to do that, now we need to start communicating with the server because the server is where we're going to be storing our files. So we need to be able to load them from there. So the way this is gonna work is like this. Let me do uh, an illustration again. So what will happen is you are the user on your PC, right? And then you, let's say, upload a file to your server. Now, instead of just, uh, we can simply send these files to a hard disk over here, a hard drive, right? and just put all the files in there, maybe create a new folder for each user. The problem is we're going to have a lot of folders and that may be ideal or maybe not. It depends on what, uh, how you want to design the system. However, it will be difficult to know the details of those files, who owns those files, for example, right? Uh, which user owns those files? And if the user changes their name, their username, does the folders will change because we can make a folder in their username and so on just to identify them, but that's very inefficient. Instead, what we'll do is we're going to create a database instead here. So database is like a table of some kind like that. Okay. So here we're going to store rows of each file that was uploaded. That way we can save who uploaded the file, uh, the file title, a lot of details in that table, right? And then we can store the actual files on the disk because we don't want to be storing actual files in the database that will slow it down significantly. So instead we'll have a database here, uh, a hard disk down here where we store information in the table, the database table, and then the actual files are stored on the disk. That way when somebody makes a request, we first check in the database, where can we find their files? So we get the rows that contain their files, and then we use the paths that are saved there to actually read the files on the hard disk.
and then load them back onto the user screen. So that's practically what we're going to be doing. So hopefully that is understood. So the first thing we have to know is to read from the database, from the PHP side, from the server, that is. So we're going to create a new object. I'm going to call that object IO. So I'm going to call const IO capitalized is equal to, and then we create an object like this. Now you don't have to call it IO. That's up to you what you want to call it. IO is just short for input output. Uh, I'm going to call it that. And now we need a few functions. For example, we may need um, a send function just to send information. Now the send is just a name because it's also a get, send, receive. This function will help us send and receive data. Now, as much as I would like to use the fetch function because it's newer and trendy, uh, unfortunately, the fetch function has a few limitations that I don't like. So that's why I never use the fetch function in my uh, in my tutorials. I use the actual XML object thingy. So let's see here. So in order for us to do our thing, we're going to create a few things like Ajax. Let's call it XHR uh, for XML. Mm, I don't even know why I'm calling it XHR, but I've seen that <laughs> on the web. So I think we're going to do it that way. It's fine. So let's create a new object. It's called an XML uh, HTTP request. Ah, so you see, that's why it's called XHR after all. So XML HTTP request, simple and straightforward. Uh, keep in mind the capitalization here is important. Okay. So this is the object that will help us to send data to our server and back. So in order to send data, very simple. You just type xhr.open because you have to open a port and then you do xhr.send. Simple and straightforward. Just like that, you've made a request to the server. Very simple. Three lines here. But there are a few extra pieces of code we have to add. For example, in opening, we have to tell it that we are using a POST request. And then we have to tell it what file we are after. So I like to call my file api.php. You can give it any name of your choice. It doesn't matter. Let's put true there to set it as an async operation, which means your your UI will not freeze while this request is being made. That's why we put that true there. The default is false and that will make sure your screen will freeze while the information is being drawn, which defeats the purpose to an extent. Okay, so we've done this, we've sent. Now, the only thing I want to do is listen for a result, right? Because sometimes I want to receive some information back so we're going to do xhr.add event listener as we've done before. And then in there, I'm going to listen for a ready state change. Right. And then I'll supply a function that will run whenever that ready state changes like so. Okay. So how do I know what to add here? Uh, that's part of the documentation. So you can go to the Mozilla Developer Network and you will see um, even just a Google search will tell you how the XML HTTP request works. Okay, so we are listening for an event here. So that's fine. Now there's something called a ready state in this request, uh, the XHR request. The ready state changes every time. I think it starts with, I don't know if it's zero. It's at zero probably when you just initialize it or it's at one, I think. And then when you open the port, it's at two. And when you send, it's at three. And then when you receive a result, it's at four. Not really when you receive a result, but if there's no result, when it gets tired of trying to send that information, then it changes the state to four. So we're only interested in the state number four because it means everything is done. 
If we don't have a result by then, then things have failed. So here I'm going to put an if statement and say if xhr dot ready state. Um, let's see here, ready state. So the ready stateness of this. So we're listening for every time this changes, we trigger this function. So this function is going to be triggered four times during this whole operation. The first time is when we open, the second when we send, and the third when we finally get tired of trying to receive or we receive a message. So I just care when the ready state is at four, then we can do something and ask the question, did everything go well? So how do we know if things went well? Well, we can always check the state. Not the state, but the status. Now, there is something called a status. This is an HTTP status. So every time you make a request to a server, the server will send back what is known as a status. Now, if there's an error on the server, the status will be in the 500s. It will be 50 something or 500, just like that. If everything went well, it would be 200. If the server wants to redirect you somewhere, it will be 300 and so on. So there are all these codes that were created, but 200 means everything is okay. So if we get a status of 200, it means there was a response from the server. So we are happy to deal with that. Now, if the status is anything but 200, then there was an error. So we can do an else statement here and actually show an error of some kind. So if you want to show the error, uh, let's do a console.log here to see where the error is. So I'm just going to log the XHR entirely. Okay, so this is fine. Now, what I want to do is intentionally cut my, uh, simulate an internet connection loss here. So let's try this. But before, uh, here I'll put an alert. Uh, let's say alert. So if everything goes well, let's alert the result. Now the result is in xhr.response text. Now there's response JSON if the format is in JSON, but let's just grab the text as it is in raw format. That way we can edit it to our liking. So what we've done here is that open, created an object uh, for making a request, opened it, send an empty set of data. So we're not really sending anything, just emptiness. And then we're listening for a result. Uh, here means everything is done. Now, if things didn't go well, let's console.log the XHR because I just want to search for the error and where to find it. That's why I'm doing that. Otherwise, let's alert let alert us to the result. So when do we send this? So for now, I just want uh, a button, for example, when we click something, then we do this search uh, sending thing. So I'm going to use any of these buttons, doesn't matter which one, just so I can click something. So I'll try this one, new folder. So on the on click, I'll do io.send. So let me find the new folder. There it is. That's the button. So I can just add an on click listener and just say io.send, open close bracket like that. Okay, great. That way we have a way to activate the thing. Then right click, inspect the element. Let's go to the console because we are waiting for a console log there. Okay, so the file we are trying to access, the php. Uh, the api.php does not exist, so we will get an error. So let's see that. So here I'm going to click that button. Let me increase this. Empty. Click. And look at that. So this, it's in red, which means something went wrong. And if you look here, there's an error. It says not found. The error is 404. So that's the status. 404 means file not found. So that 404 is not 200, right? So this is why it will come to here and do a console.log instead because it's not 200. It's 404, which means page not found. 
So let's look at the XHR here uh, and see if we can spot an error in there. So look at the xhr.ready state. It's at number four, which is exactly what we were looking for. So we grabbed it while it was on number four. Great. Look at the status. The status is 404. So you can also check the status text, which is not found. So that could be your error message as well. So let's look for something else we can use here. There's also the upload object in here, which shows you the upload status, what you've loaded uh, on abort, on what. So all these um, uh, event listeners you can have. So let's see here. Mm, response. There's response and response text. Where is response text? Uh, this is the response and then there's response text. Okay. Great, great. Now on abort, nothing. On progress, nothing. Okay. So what am I looking for here? Wait a second. I'm looking for the error. Is there on error? On error. There it is. Hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do instead, let's add an event listener, a second one. So I'm going to do this. All right, so we need to close that. Now, instead of checking for the ready state, let's check for the error. Uh, let's put an E there to capture the event. And then let's do console.log E. So I'm going to remove this console.log here because I'm expecting this will happen on the error instead. So let's do that again. Let me refresh, clear that and click. So this wasn't considered an error, I guess. So that didn't work. Mm. That wasn't considered an error. So back to here. Um, let me try a second one. I want to see if there's a difference this time. Let me stop the server and then let's try and read from the server. So the error is the server is stopped right now and it's trying to read. So I think it's going to take a moment and then it shows me the result. So as you can see, the ready state is four. It tried several times, but there was no response and there was an error actually. So the error did show here. So in this case, it does show when there's an error. So let's look at the error object. Uh, type error. Uh, what was the error message? Uh, original target, blah, blah, blah. Type error. I was hoping there was an error message somewhere here. Doesn't look like there is. Timestamp, return value is trusted. Hmm. Okay, so the event doesn't seem to have an error at all. But regardless, what we're going to do here is just do an alert. And say an error occurred. Please make sure you have uh, Let's make it shorter. Please check your connection. Something like that. Okay, so let's see this again. I'm gonna uh, refresh the page. Oh, the refresh won't work. So let's switch on our server first. That's the only way it's gonna work. Okay, so it's worked. Then let's stop the server. And then let's try and read now. I want to see that alert. If we're trying to act like there's no internet connection and there we go, an error card, please check your connection. Great. That's good. Okay. So let's switch on our internet again. Uh, the server in this case, not really the internet. You are just pretending that's the internet. And then if things don't go well, if that's the result, um, this also means an error. So, Instead of console.log 
um what do we do here so it's up to you what you want to do in this case in this case this would be this would mean an error on the server itself so i think um, let's do an alert instead what i want to do is console.log the the response that way we can see the error if it's there okay and then let's give the user an alert. We we'll say an, an, an error occurred. Um, what do we say here? Uh, please try again. Or something. Please try again later. Something like that. It is, these are custom messages. It's up to you what you want to do here. But this is fine. Okay, so, so far, let's try one more time here. I'm gonna start my Apache, it started. Let me refresh the page to update and then click an error card, please try again later. Okay, and then it shows you the response here. Great, great. So here it just says not found, that's the thing. Okay, fine. So now let's go to our server itself. In my drive, I'm gonna right click, create a new file. I'm gonna call this file api.php. That way, at least we have that file now. And then here, I'm just gonna say, uh, this is text from the server. As simple as that. So the file api.php, that's all it has. So back again, if I now refresh and let me close the, let me just minimize it a little bit. So if I click on that, this is text from the server. So our connection is great. We don't have errors here, nothing. Okay, good. So anything you echo in this page is going to be considered a result. So let's put some PHP tags because this is a PHP file after all. It's gonna do all the connections and stuff. Okay, so now that we have a connection there, I want us to try and actually upload some files. So there will be ways to upload files by, I think the most convenient way is to drag and drop your file somewhere within here. Okay, so drag and drop onto the table. Let's see, drag and drop files onto the table. Mm. Yeah. So drag and drop files onto the table to add. So let's put a subtext here on my drive. So we're gonna use drag and drop. Let me come here. Mm. Where, where, where are we? My drive over here. Oh, is this the one though? No, it's not. I want the the one with the class title. This is the one here. So right under here, I want some subtext. So I'm gonna add a div and say, drag and drop files onto the table. below or something i don't know so i'm gonna refresh hmm. maybe this is not the right place to it's gonna make the thing ambiguous i think let's put the file we should have added it here i think let's do that over here drag and drop files here and hmm, i think that will work better so no file was selected drag and drop here would be better. So let's move this div. Let's find where it says no file was selected right there. Let me remove that break tag. So right after this guy, let's put that div right here, like so. So say drag and drop files are here. Let's just say drag and drop files here, that's enough. So here I'm going to add a, a class uh, I'm going to call it drop zone like that just for styling purposes, right? So that's the drop zone. So let's go to uh, styles here and do dot 
drop dash zone like that. Okay. And let's do, let's give it a fixed height, fixed height of 200 pixels. Um, the width obviously will be 100%. Let's add a border and a border will be, instead of solid, this one will be dotted maybe. And then uh, thick, a few pixels wide and maybe a gray color like that. And let's put some border radius, border radius so that it has rounded corners of 10 pixels. Let's give it a slight change in background color. Let's give it a grayish uh, look, maybe CCC. Um, maybe a slight margin. Let's do margin um, of 10 pixels. Okay, so let me see how that looks. And there we go, we have our drop zone, but it's in the wrong place. So let's go back to drop zone and figure it out. So the drop zone should be outside this div. So let's just move that outside the div, like so. Let's do that. Great. That's our drop zone. Okay, there we go. Lovely drop zone. I think the pixels are a bit much. The depth of the color is a bit much. So let's change those things. So instead of thick, I'm going to say maybe two pixels. Let's see how well that changes things. Eh. Maybe too little. Let's try four pixels. Let's add some padding as well. And then let's do text align center. Let's also do display flex. That way I can center the text everywhere. And then I can say align items center like that. Okay. Uh, what else? Mm, let me see how that looks. Okay. Much, much better drop zone. Um, the justify content. Where is that? Align items center. Justify content center. Is display flex? Okay, so it's justified. How about this side? Should be align items. Ah. Like that. Okay. Let me also reduce the background color to a lighter one. Let's try E like so. There we go. So drag and drop files here. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My mouse is fighting with me. Okay, so in here you can also put an icon of some kind. Let's try that. There's that icon though for the the main thing. This one here, cloud arrow up. I think if I say, yeah, I think that's the appropriate icon here. So let me put that here like so. Let's see that. Mm -hmm. In fact, let me change this a little bit. Let's change the um, the flex direction. So flex direction, let's do column. That way uh, these two guys will be up down like so. Okay, great, uh, looking good. So drag and drop it files here to upload them. Okay, cool. So once we drop a file here, we want uh, things to happen. Okay, so we're gonna put some event listeners on this thing to listen for stuff. So first of all, uh, let me go there. Now, if I grab a file, let's try, um, I don't know where I'll grab a file from. Actually, before we use the drag and drop, let's just use the normal file uploader. 
So what I'm going to do inside here is I'm going to do the drop zone. I'll change this to a label. OK. So I'm going to refresh. Still good, right? And once again, um, let me find drop zone again. I want to put a cursor pointer. Then also I want when I hover on the drop zone for something to change. So for example, the background color should change to something else. So I'm going to do this. Let me have it change to something darker, maybe DDD, or maybe so obvious like that. And then Hmm, what else? So we can change all kinds of things here. Um, let's try the border as well. Everything stays the same except the color maybe can be red. Okay. So let's try this. If I hover on it, that's what I see. So you can design this to whatever liking you have. So I want if I click here, um, something to happen. So let's go here. drag and drop files here or click to upload. Okay, great. We want to be able to click here to upload as well. So let's put an input there. And this input is of type file. And um, I want it hidden from view. So I'm going to say class uh, hide. That way it's hidden, right? So when we click on this input called file, it opens a file uploader thingy so we can select a file. But the way a label works, the reason we've shifted this to a label is because if I click on the label, whatever is inside the label is clicked as well. That way, even if we can't see this input, we just click on the label, it will still act like we've clicked this thing. So let's see this in action. So I'm going to refresh. And if I now click on this, we have this thing to allow us to upload a file. Now we will be able to drag and drop files here as well, but let's start with a simple solution instead. So click there and there's a file. So if I, the moment I select the file, I want the upload process to begin. And now this upload process should have a, uh, a an uploader bar here so we can copy this part here and put it in there so that we have something of a progress bar, right? So let's see where it says drive space. I want to find that. And so we can use that to upload our thing. So let's see here. Mm, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? This is the content label. Let me find the drive space. There it is. So this whole thing is our thingy copy. Now I will remove this class because this allows it to be a, I think it's called position something, something. Anyway, I can change it. I can always change that. So no problem. Let's go back to drop zone, which is right here. And let's put our item down here like so. Okay. Let me move this away. Oh, my magic mouse. What do you know? Mm. So let me add a style and just say position static, which is the default value for position there. That way it's not floating like this one. Okay, so there we go. We have drive space. That's great. We don't need this drive space title. So let's remove this. We just need to know the progress. Let's say here I'll put 0% like at this or maybe I'll say 50%. That way we can see what's going on. And there we go, right? The height of this thing here, let's change that. So here I'm going to say, oh my God, height auto, and then background color, transparent. All right. That way we have a progress bar of some kind like this. So while we upload, 
our file, right? So very cool. Now uh, let's begin and see if we can actually do what we are. Uh, we can have an actual upload here. Hmm. Okay. So the first thing we have to see is whether the uh, the progress bar will actually work. So let's give that a shot. All right. So if right now I click on this, let me go to maybe drive D here. I'm looking for any large file, like maybe this one, it's 800 MB, and try to upload that. So nothing really happens here as predicted. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, this is the actual progress bar, right? Let's come back here. And this is the div that we should hide and show whenever we, that's the progress bar holder. So let's name these appropriately so they're easy to find. I'm gonna say JS, we, you don't need to use the JS, just so I know I'm using this for JavaScript. I'm gonna say prog holder, okay? And then I'm gonna use the hide uh, class so that it's hidden from view, okay? That way, now it's not there until I try to upload something. Alrighty then. Now, the progress bar itself, this is the progress bar. This one is just the label showing us what's going on. Now, if I remove the height, I want to see if I can minimize this by putting that information. Actually, let me just leave it as it is. No need to suffer like that. So here I'm going to say, um, let's do this. Oh my God. JS prog text, okay? And then this one will be JS prog. Okay, so this is the actual progress bar. This is the text for the progress bar. And this is the progress bar holder. Okay, good. So now that we have that information, let's go down to the uploader section. Now, before we do that, once we upload, we add a file here, we are immediately supposed to start uploading stuff, okay? So we're gonna put an on change uh, event there. So whenever the value of this thing changes, the on change is triggered, okay? So if you select the same file again, it's not triggered. If you select a different file, it is. So on this one, we're gonna do io dot send like that okay that's what we're gonna do and then here on the send i want us to grab the file from within here so in order to grab this thing we say this okay which means this object and then this object this input has got a property called files so this dot files, that's what we're targeting, but it's an array because you can put several files in there. So we want just the first file. So we're gonna do this because that's how you get add first item from an array. Um, yeah, so this is an array and we grab the first item, which is item zero from there. So what we're simply saying is run this function, but send in the file that was added here. Okay, great. So let's go now to the IO function, which has been called and see what we can do. So if I get here on the send thingy, mm -hmm. so over here, what I wanna do is I wanna capture that file. So here I'm gonna say file like so. So I'm just gonna call it file can put any very any any text here it's just a variable and that's what i want to send here but i want to send it in form of a form we so that it's formatted properly as a file so what i'm going to do is generate a form because i don't actually have a form here so i just want to create one so i'm going to say let my form is equal to new form data 
So form data is the class that generates a new form in JavaScript. So in order to add things to this form, you just append to them. So here I'm going to say my form dot append it because the form data object has an append function. That's why we are doing append like that. So that function you could do if you don't understand any of the things and want to know what is possible with that thing, you can just do a console.log. So for example, here we can do a console. This is very important to learn console.log my form just to see what it has within it, right? So I'm going to do this. Let's inspect the element so that we have our console there and let's refresh. Now, if I click on this, I can select some kind of a file like that. And then there's an alert. What is that alert for? No idea. Anyway, there's an alert. We'll figure it out. Then there's form data in here. If I click, uh, there's stuff in here. Okay. There's, these are functions in the prototype. There's append, which is a function. That's what we are using here to append stuff, but it's zero here because we haven't appended anything yet. So there's also this delete to remove stuff, the entries for each to loop through all these things, get all the keys you can grab from the form and set stuff and values and so on. So all these are functions you can actually use. You can Google uh, how you can use any of those, but we want to use just the append function. So I want to append to my form. Let me undo this. Okay. So the way you append, you put a key and then you put a value. The value in our case is the file and the key in this case. Now, see, I'm not putting quotes on the file because this is an actual object. This is a variable, but here I'm putting quotes because it's just text. The key will be called file as well. You can name the key anything as long as when capturing it on the PHP side, you remember it's called file. This is like creating an input and then you're adding an item there. And then of course, we're going to send the form itself to the PHP side. Okay, great. But we also need some progress, right? We need a progress bar to show us what's going on with the upload. So let's add an event listener to listen for the progress as well. So I'm going to put that like so. And here we are listening to the progress. Now the upload, there's an upload object which specifically stores this kind of information. So instead of xhr.add event, we want to add an event to the upload object, which is within the xhr object. You can console.log this to check what this has to offer if you want. But that's how we do it. Let's grab the E, which is the event, so we can do some calculations. So I'm going to say let percent is equal to, we want to know the percentage so far of what we have captured. So there's E dot total, which is all the total bytes that you are sending. And then there's E dot loaded, which is how much has been sent so far. If we divide these two, we get a number that is less than one. Then we can multiply that number by 100 to get a percentage. But at the end of the day, that number usually has a lot of decimal places. So let's use math.round to round it off. Okay, so there we go. We have a percentage there. But what do we do with this percentage? Well, we can grab some items to display that information. So we're going to say document.query selector. In there, I want to grab the prog. Um, is it JS? JS prog, right? That's the actual progress bar. I'm going to change the style dot width to be equal to percent. But because it should be in pixels, I'll put PX at the end of that. So we're just changing the width of that bar, which is this bar here, this progress bar that will be here, changing the width to suit that. Then there's also the prog text, right? Also the text uh, 
instead of this width, we deal with the inner HTML, which is the content is equal to that, but let's put percent. Actually, why am I putting pixel there instead of percent? It should be percent like that. Okay, good. Then at some point we have to display the, what is this? Display the, um, the progress by itself before we even listen in for an event. So right here, as we are beginning, let me do this and let me duplicate. So this is the progress holder. That one, I just want to remove the hide class from it. So I'm gonna say dot class list dot remove uh, the hide class. Okay, good. And then I want to change the prog instead of percent plus, I'll remove that and just change that to zero percent so that we reset things. Maybe let me show it after I reset it like that. Okay, great. So all we're doing is resetting the progress bar and then updating the progress bar every time there's some progress. Simple enough, right? So let's see this in action. So I'm gonna close that and let's refresh. There was an alert I saw, which was empty. I don't know why that alert even came. Oh, the response text. Ah, okay. So that alert comes after everything is done and that's the response text. It's empty because there's nothing here. So here we're just gonna say text from server so that we know uh, something happened here. But since this is PHP, we have to echo the text like so. Okay, great. So refresh, let's try and upload something. So let's upload this file. And there we go. Look at that awesomeness there. It's doing very well. Like that little in engine that could. Okay, so once it's done at the end, text from server. Look at that. So very good. We've managed to send the file. Let's also close this part once we are done, right? So I'm gonna go here. I think this uploader is becoming very, very specific, right? Because it's for uploading only. So we may have to change the object name to suit that a bit more, but that's okay for now. So what I want to do is once everything is done, we copy that and reset everything again uh, over here. So I'm gonna do this, bam. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we grab those things, reset everything. Instead, we make it disappear. We add that hide class once more. Okay, uh, very good. So let's try this again. Refresh, click a click Let's add that. So we wait, they will see the alert and then that will disappear. There we go. So if I try this again, I can upload another file like that. Okay, very cool. <sighs> Indeed, uh, this is cool. Interesting. Okay, cool. So now that we have that out of the way, um, now the thing is, what if we can, um, what if we want to upload multiple files, right? Uh, let's see that, how that would work. So what if we want to upload multiple files? In this case, let's change the input to allow multiple selections, right? So on the input here, at the end there, let's remove this name thing. We're gonna say multiple like this. This way it's gonna allow us to upload multiple files. So I'm gonna go to here and try to select two files here and open. 
but you can see the speed of the upload hasn't changed because it's still just grabbing the one file. That's because we did program it that way. So because we're just getting one file. So let's remove this zero over there. So let's just this dot files, whatever number of files we have, that's fine. We send all of them and let's go down here. Now, instead of file here, it's files like that, two files. And then we will use a loop instead. So I'm going to say um, for files dot length, and then file I will be added to this. Now I want to grab this and push it in there like so. Okay. Oopsie daisy. My mouse is the worst. Okay. So instead of just adding one file here, we're going to add the current file there like so. But then here there's file, but we need different keys for each separate file. Otherwise we'll have problems. So let's use this I itself. Since this number changes throughout the loop, we're going to just add I to the end of the key. That way there's file one, file two, file three. It starts with file zero actually, and so on. Okay, so once we add all that to the form, then we can upload at the same time. So let's see if the progress bar will be slower this time. How big is this? Yeah, not significantly big, but still, if I do this, you see it's slightly slower now because there are two files uploading. Okay. Now, if you want to upload these separately, there's a separate tutorial that if, if for example, you want to see separate progress bars for each file, there's another tutorial I did. Um, just check my channel, uploading multiple files in Ajax or something like that. Okay, great. So this will do for our purposes for now. And um, we want to be able to cancel the upload if we want, right? So how do we do that? Let's add a button, shall we? So I'm going to come here. Uh, let's grab one of these, maybe any of these buttons really will do just fine. Uh, let's try this next button here. So I'm going to find the next button, copy that. I just wanted the class name. Then let's go to our progress thingy. No file selected. It's right here. So right on the progress bar, I think it would be appropriate to add the abort maybe bleh. maybe here anywhere here so the design obviously is up to you and let's call it appropriately as abort or cancel upload all right let's see how that works i think i should have grabbed this one this one is floating <laughs> Anyway, let me click and see it in action. Okay, so there we go. Cancel upload. This one is floating. So let me change. Um, let me find the other one. Let's see, find it's class 42. I should have known. So let's change it to class 42, which is the other button. Let's refresh. Click. Yeah. Cancel upload. Boom, boom. But it's not canceling, right? Okay, great. So how do we do this? So on this, on this one, we wanna we want to be able to interrupt this uh, this thing here. Now remember that the. Mm, Let's do this. We're going to say on click, we're going to say IO dot cancel. Yeah. 
you know what let's change the io to upload i think it will make more sense so i'm going to select all instances of io and change those to upload small letters right sorry about that so here we've changed that upload right everywhere where we were referencing that we'll say upload hmm okay what am i looking for now I'm looking for drop zone. Okay, there we go. So we've changed that to upload.send. So make sure everywhere where it was um, IO, you change it to upload. It's because I think this function is better suited to just the upload process. Then we can make another one for the IO uh, for loading other things. Okay, so upload.send files, great. Upload.cancel, that's fine. It makes more sense, more readable like that. So. We are canceling here. So what do we do during the cancel process? So I'm gonna come here and do, the best place to check for a cancel thingy is in the progress because this runs many times a second. I think we can check to see. So here what I'll do is we're gonna say upload. We're gonna create a, a variable called cancel. Mm, or we'll say cancelled is equal to so we put an if statement whether we check to see if upload.cancelled then xhr.abort simple as that okay so if there's only one statement in an if statement we don't need to put the curly braces this is good enough so if upload.cancelled then cancel and then here we're going to say cancelled is equal to false that way normally it runs oh i should put a comma here okay and then the cancel function this is just a variable then we're going to have the cancel function which will be equal to a function like that okay and then put a comma like that so the reason why we have both of these is this is just to set to tell to set this one to true and say it's been cancelled because the reason we're doing this and not cancelling immediately is because these things take a bit of time there may be milliseconds between when you click the cancel button and when this progress thing runs so if you do it in between uh, then you'll be out of luck because then this function will not be running at that time So for us to make sure it doesn't matter We just set a value called cancelled to true and then every time this runs it just checks whether we cancelled or not And then whenever it finds the time it will abort the operation, right? Though this all thing happens this whole thing happens in the very few uh, milliseconds really but this is just to ensure that we don't need precision, right? So cancel will actually set this, which is the upload dot canceled to true. Okay. Yeah. And then because to allow us to upload again, we have to set this to false at some point while we start the upload. So right here, let's set that to false that way when we start the upload process we set it set it to false and then we can set it to true if we want to cancel also it's very possible while we are uploading to click and start uploading another file which is insane so let's see here if i refresh and click there but let's see the cancel if that works at all so i'm gonna open that and then let's cancel you see an error card please try again later uh, that error card because of the uh you canceled the the upload right there we go so the upload was canceled promptly 
So we can hide this if we want. After that, that's up to us. But let's try again to upload. This time I'm going to click here. Then I'll click again and upload once again. And look what happens now. It's glitching. Yeah. So it's allowing another upload while we're uploading another one. That shouldn't be allowed. So what we're going to do is create a variable called uploading. We'll set it to false to start with. Okay. Then here we ask ourselves, are we already uploading? So we say if upload dot uploading, which means are we, are we asking if it's true or not, right? Um, we can do an alert and say, please wait for the upload to complete like that. And then return, right? Great. So if we are uploading already, let's wait. And then here we set the upload dot uploading to true, right? Great. So we first check if we're already uploading, then if we are not, because return means exit the function. So we will never get here. But if we get to this point, it means we are not uploading, then let's set uploading to true. But also we have to set that to false at some point. So we set it to false once we are on ready state four, we can set the uploading to false because at that point we are no longer uploading. Whether or not there was an error, it doesn't matter. We set it to false. Okay, so great. Let's see that in action. So refresh, let's try to re-upload the same file several times and let's see what we get. Please wait for the upload to complete. Okay, man, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And then it's done, great. Okay, so at least we've solved all those problems, which is great. Now we need to be able to grab the file on the server side because here we are sending the file but ignoring it because we are not saving it on the server. As you can see here, the file is not there uh, because our API is empty. Okay, but at least here we can do things pretty well. Now the final thing in this video uh, what I want us to do is to be able to drag and drop a file here. Now, if I tried that right now, uh, let me try and grab the same file I've been uploading and drag it into my browser and try to drop it here. Um, it asks me to save the file, right? So that's not really what I want. If let's say I try an image, right? Let me see if I have an image here. Do I have an image? Let me go to the desktop uh, images. Oh, I already did have an image. So let me drag and drop that onto the page, right? Boom, look what happens. The whole page is replaced with an image. We don't want this, right? So the first thing we have to do is prevent this default behavior of drag and drop. So. If the thing is dropped in here, it should behave differently. So what we're going to do is put an event listener for a drop event. So this is the drop zone right there. So I'm going to put an event listener called on. There was an event called on drop, but I think they removed it. Hmm. I think it's on drag end this time, right? But who knows? Let's try on drop. I think they removed it though. So here we're going to say event dot prevent default like that. Simple and straightforward. Okay. So let's refresh. Let's see if it's going to respect that. So I'm going to click and bring it down here and drop. No, nothing. Okay. So let's try drag end. I think that's where it's changed to. Um, Let's see. So I'm going to go back and let's try this now. Click and drag. Ah, 
So that doesn't work either. What's going on here? Let me try one last time. Because I didn't refresh the page that time. Okay, so it's still not working. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, on. So I just put the D there. <laughs> I want to see what I have here. On drag end, on drag exit, on drag leave. On drag over, on drag start, on drop. Hmm. Okay, so it's one of these. Let's try on drag exit. Yeah? Let's try and find the right event, shall we? Okay, refresh one more time. These things do change a bit. <sighs> Bollocks. Okay, that doesn't work either. So let's try again. On drag. Maybe it's not even on drag. Let's just put on. Let's see here what we get. On console and close through Q and drag end exit. So we've tried drag end. Didn't work. Drag drop didn't work. Drag exit. Drag leave. What's drag leave? There's drag leave and drag enter, which is if you enter the area of an object, that's drag enter. And drag leave, I think, is when you don't drop it there, you just leave. Okay. But drag end should have worked, actually. Huh. In any case, let's find the right one. Progress, resize. Huh. Okay, so it has to be on the drag side. So let's put that D there. On drag. Maybe that's the one. We don't have to drag leave, drag enter. Let's try on drag. One of these guys should work. Yeah? So let me drag. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not working at all. Okay. What we're gonna do is... Let me duplicate this a few times. Let me add a few on drag end, right? Okay. And then let's do another on drag um, exit. Let's try that as well. And then on drag on drop. Let's try on drop as well. Maybe all of them need to be active. Let's just switch all of them off. Let's see which one will, if it will survive. <sighs> that hurts. Event dot prevent default. Hmm. What is going on here? Okay, there's one more missing. The on drag. There's on drop. Let's try on drag. Let's just add it to the thing. On drag. Refresh. Okay. Still nothing. Okay. So in this case, uh, just Google. I don't know why this isn't working. Just use Google in this case. So, but before I do Google, let me add one more. What haven't I used here? Drag exit, drag exit is there, drag end, drag exit, drag leave. Let's try on drag leave. It can't be on drag over, definitely. So let me just try that. Refresh. Let's try again. Oh my God. Okay, in this case, let's Google. 
So we say JS, right? Um, prevent default drag and drop. Yeah, let's try that. Is call to prevent default really necessary on drop event? So let's look, this is 2013. Things have changed since then. So let's try and find something. Drop event not firing even in the event. Yeah, okay. So let's try this 2021. That's closer to where we are. Stack overflow. Yes, yes. So let's see what's going on. I don't want the jQuery uh, version of things. Mm. What do we got? Anyone without jQuery on drop? Uh, console e.prevent. Actually, event is being fired. It's a console bug. Hmm. It doesn't fire even when calling on the enter and drag over. Drag enter and drag over. Actually, only on drag enter it's being fired. Okay. What is he looking for? On drop. Here, on drop still works. So it's on the drop event. Okay. Let's do it the other way around, right? Let's try this. Uh, let me remove all of this. Uh, we have the drop zone, right? Let's add an event listener down here instead. Okay. So I'm going to go right at the end here. And we're going to do let drop zone equal to document dot query selector. Let's get our drop zone. Don't forget the dot drop zone what am i typing <laughs> oh no no drop zone like this okay so let's grab that item right let's do drop zone dot add event listener uh what are we listening for the drop event hmm. and function oh no There we go. All right. So I want this to fire. Uh, first of all, let's grab the event, right? E. We're going to say E dot. I just want to see something in the console. So console dot log E. Right. So I want to add several of these so that I know it's firing at certain times, right? There's the uh, drag, drag enter, and then there's the drag over. Okay, so I just want to know if any of these are working at all. So inspect, let's go to the console, make sure it's nice and clean. Then let's drag a file. Right. In fact, we don't even need to drag a file. I can drag any item over there. It should work, right? Oh, it's not draggable. Okay, unless I put draggable on it. But regardless, let me just grab this and I want to go over the item. So you see, drag over is firing. Yeah? Drag over. So let me see. Before I move this, let me just move it out of the way. Let me see what event fired. It's just the drag over ah, and the drag enter. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's enlarge you. There's drag enter and drag over. Okay, so those guys are firing. So that's great. But what about the drag, the drop button? What's going on there? So drag over invalid argument drop zone. What the? What is that? Huh. Okay, so that doesn't work. So let's search again. Let's do this now and say JS 
drop event not firing okay let's see drop event not firing in chrome well it's not just a chrome problem the drop event the drop event is fired when an element or text selection is dropped on a valid drop target okay so on drop in order to have the drop event to call on a div you must cancel the on drag enter and drag over events really really drag over no it doesn't work and the drag over okay okay let's try that on the drag over let's do uh, uh, wait let's do e dot prevent default let's try that so it says in there if I disable the drag over event the drop will work okay okay let's try that shall we mm-hmm Let's go there. No, nope. <laughs> doesn't work at all. <laughs> okay, so what's going on? Um, drag over, prevent default. Drop didn't fire for me in Chrome. This is still not working. What is going on? <laughs> okay, give me a second. You know, I've done this a hundred, a thousand times and it's not working. So. The point, the reason why I'm not going to cut this out is you have to know that uh, programming sometimes can get very frustrating, but don't get frustrated. Try to find the answer. Even though it takes you a week to find the answer, just do it because perseverance is part of being a programmer. If you get frustrated and stop this, you're not going to get to your destination. So, so what I'm going to do instead is this. Um, Let's go here. The event to prevent default is just on the drag over. So I think what I'm missing is I should put that on the drop event as well. Because once we drop, I should, I didn't put that event dot prevent default. So let's see if that will work. Ah, look at that, it worked. Okay, so let me remove these guys here. Okay, let me just remove these two. Let's see what's going on here. Because I just want to leave the drop event. I want to see where it breaks and doesn't work anymore. So that we figure out what we were doing wrong. Ah, right. Okay. So which means the drop event doesn't work on its own. You need to prevent the default on the drag over as well as on the drop. Okay. 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 Makes sense. Um, hmm. Let me come back here. Let's try this again. Ah, okay. Okay. So now I figure it out. Okay, so what's happening is you have to prevent the default on the drag over as the that post was saying and on here as well. Now, what I want, so on the drop and on the drag over, we don't really need the drag enter. I think maybe we need the drag leave for some... Uh, eh, we can use this one at some point. So what I want to do is mute this code for a second and and i want to add this directly to the to the drop zone i want to see if there's going to work this time so i'm going to say on drop again and say event dot prevent default i want to see why this didn't work on drag over let's do the same thing event dot prevent default Okay, so I just need those two on the drag, drop and drag over. So I'm gonna refresh again. Let's try this. 
So click. So even there it worked. This is weird. It didn't seem to work the first. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so we can add them here. I prefer to add things here. Uh, much better for me. So if you want, you can add event listeners down here. If it's more human readable for you, that's up to you. Okay, so I'll remove those guys. Now that I can drop items there, right? So on the upload here, I want to add a few functions that do certain things. So for example, on the drag over, when we drag an item here, oh, actually it shows that you're on there. So there's no need to worry. Let me try if I drag. I want to see if it changes color. It doesn't. So when I'm dragging over like this, it doesn't change color to show that I've reached my destination when dragging, but I can drop there and it's fine. So I just need to know if I'm in the vicinity of my thing there. So what I'm going to do is add a few functions. So uh, this one upload to it. Let's put one code drop zone like this. And then in there, we're going to put an object instead. So let's do this. So drop zone is another object. And then in there, we're going to say something like we're going to add um, a function called highlight. So this is equal to a function. Uh -huh. uh, then what else can we do? Highlight, do it. I don't know. Remove, highlight. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, this is quite verbose, but it's it's okay. Okay, so within the uh, this drop zone object. So if I want to get to this, I have to type upload dot drop zone dot highlight, right? Okay. So here, all I want to do is uh, add a class to the drop zone. That's all. So. I'm going to say document dot query selector and I want to get the drop zone drop zone class dot class list dot. So I want to highlight, which means I want to add a drop zone highlight. That's what I'm going to call it. I hope I'm spelling highlight properly because yeah. I'm starting to feel like I am the highlight. I'm high. Okay, so documented query selector drop zone, then add this class. And then when we remove the highlight, we want to uh, remove that same class. So this will be the class name we add to highlight the place. Okay, cool. So what I want to do is let me create a class like this. Uh, let's remove highlight. Okay, great. So let's create this class at the top here. So I'm going to do this drop zone there, then this dot drop zone highlight. So here I just want to change the background color to something else. So I'm going to copy that and paste it here. Okay. And I want, I think that's okay. I just want to change the background color. That's all. So I will inspect this and I just want to grab the background color from it and then move it around maybe to something like this so that we can see that something is highlighted here. So cancel that, come back here and put it there. Okay, simple and straightforward. Then let's go back to the label which has the drop zone. So on drag over, when I'm dragging, I prevent the default, right? But then at the same time, let me put a semicolon because I can put another piece of code right there. So this is clunky, but it works. So when I drag over, I'm going to do upload dot drop zone dot highlight. It's a function. So let's do that. Great. And then on the 
drag leave or on the drop as well. So once I drop something, I should remove that highlight. So select on drop, then we'll say remove highlight like so. So I'll copy this and also add it to another event called the on drag leave. That way when I leave the drag zone, uh, I can remove the highlight. Okay, great. So let's test that. Refresh. I'm going to grab a file. So let's try that. So as you can see now, it shows red and leave. When I leave the drag zone, uh, you see that? That's what I was trying to do. Then boom, done. Okay. So immediately I let go, it should start the upload process. So this is all good. Now we can say on the drop event, so event would prevent default, and then remove the highlight. Then I can now um, I can now actually send some data. Okay, so here I can say upload dot um, upload dot send right. Now the thing is, I need to know what to send here. Uh, what 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 file? What thing am I sending now? The thing is, I'm doing all this here, and it becoming very unprofessional. So what I would do is, I'm gonna cut this out, and instead I'll say upload dot dot drop like that. So I'll make a function there instead. So let's go to the upload uh, thingy here, the upload object. So let's create a function called drop and then paste that here. I'll grab the E as an event. So every reference to event we change to E. So E dot prevent default, remove the highlight and then send some data. Now, what am I sending? We have to know what's that. So before we can send anything, all I want to do is do a console.log of what we received, right? I'll do E like so, done. Okay, so there's the drop. I need a comma there. Uh, what else? The drag over. Let's create another function here that will handle that. Okay, like so. So let me see what I'm having here. Uh, let me find that label again. So let me see if there are any two things I'm putting here. So drag over is this one. And then drag leave only has one item there. So we, we don't need to create a function for that. But this has two pieces of code. So better we move them away from here. So we do upload dot drag over like that. Don't forget to send the event just like in here as well. Send the event. Okay, so now back to the, the object. Drag over is here. Let me paste what I copied like that so that they are here. Oops. Okay, so now when we drop, we're going to get a console.log of what we have dropped, right? So that we can know what to do with it. So I'm going to go to the console again and let's try and drag and drop something. So click and drag. Drop. Ah, look there. There's an event with something. Okay, so what are we looking for really? Um, let's see anything interesting in here. You know, I'm looking for the the thing that contains uh, any information we can use. Source element. Hmm. Okay. Let's go to the prototype here. That's where all the functions are. Ah, there's this one here. Data transfer. Nice. Data transfer is no. Really? 
What the? Hmm. What else can we find here? You know what? What does Mozilla have to say about this? Let's see. JS drop uh, file file name or something from path. How to get file path? Okay, let's figure that out. Ah, file drag and drop Mozilla. Let's figure that out. Uh, original event to treasure transfer dot file dot length. Okay, original event. Okay, let's check that out. Where is original event? Oh, there it is. Oh no, original target. Mm, target. Where is original event? Okay, what does Mozilla say? Drag more files to drop. Okay, how do we handle those files? Event to data transfer to items. Hmm, okay. Uh, okay, event to data transfer to items. So that's the... Let's do event to data transfer. Let's see what's in there. Okay, so let's refresh. Let's do that one more time again. Click, drag, and drop. Ah, look at that. There's actually stuff in there. Data transfer. Great. There's items in here. Ah, good. There's also files, right? There's an image in there. Look at that. It's a kind of file type image awesomeness there's files zero and there's a file there's a file name there's a file size okay good okay so dot files that's all we needed right so send normally when we send say send we are sending files right from that object so we have exactly the same thing here so hallelujah let's put that there and let's do this yep let's send those files shall we so let's try this mm -hmm. i'm gonna close that and refresh let's see if it works go grab and drop boom done it worked okay let's do something a bigger file maybe let's try this one drag let's say movie and drop Look at that. Very cool. Indeed. Okay. So things are working as intended. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let's see if we drag two files. What happens? Two files. Uh, maybe some more and some more. I just want to see what can happen if it will run slower due to a large number of files. And it is running slower. So things are working as intended. Look at that. So let's cancel the upload. Boom. All right, done. Okay, we need to be able to hide that once we cancel. Uh, so let's fix that real quick. Uploading cancel. Um, and what we're gonna do is let's grab, let's come here. When we say cancel it here, let's do this. Let's put an alert and say alert your upload was cancelled boom exclamation point yep i think that should do and then with that in mind let's reset stuff so we're gonna reset this now since we are copying you see the reset here we are doing the same code here and now we want to put the same code here as well to reset the uh, the what is this the progress bar so instead let's just create a function to make things easier so let's to put the function here I'm gonna say upload dot reset maybe we're gonna call it reset progress something like that and then let's make a function real quick uh, function blah 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 comma great so I'm going to paste that data in there, like so. 
like that great and then grab this so wherever i use this data like right here i'm just going to paste that function and say upload dot reset progress okay copy that uh let's do the same thing here boom and let's do the same thing here boom cleaner code okay so refresh let's try this one more time i'm just gonna grab one item from here and try to cancel it oops that didn't upload for some reason let me grab this oh okay i think it was too quick in uploading so let me grab this It didn't show the progress so there's something wrong inspect console log nothing what's going on what is going on reset progress maybe i didn't need to do this here ah right right okay so right here i just need this one thing instead of reset progress oops what am i doing I just needed to copy this line. This is the part that's supposed to remove. After I reset, let me remove the hide so I can show it. Show it. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. So let me try this one more time. Refresh the page. Don't forget that. And back. And let's drag and drop. Boom. Okay. Cancel upload. Okay your upload was cancelled okay great it's working as intended so if i try to upload again it's gonna have to work i hope there we go okay it's working as intended all right ladies and gentlemen this is it for this particular video so if you recaps here what we've done the upload process is working we just need to capture the data on the PHP side because the HTML side here is sending the data properly to the PHP. It just needs to receive it and save it on the server here. That's where we are now. And then we can also shift what uh, segment we are on by just clicking these guys here. We will obviously need to reload the table depending on where we are, but we're gonna do that in the next video. All right, I will see you.